All right, hey everyone. Sorry if I've been quiet for a day or two, uh, kind of. Uh, but I've been extremely busy with this. So I uh, have managed to get a uh, a system in for making sure that the player can travel. This is what it looks like here. Uh, this is just the HUD thingy, and it, like says the names of the areas and everything like that. It's pretty interesting. So it's like using the progress tag system which seems to be having problems I've run into a bug in the progress tag system where um, in the editor it works fine but in if I uh, compile the game when you actually walk onto one of these things uh, one of the home points and this menu comes up it never actually unlocks your uh, it never actually unlocks the fast travel nodes well, at the moment, there's only three fast travel nodes anyway. It's not like a game-breaking bug, but it's pretty annoying. Uh, with that said, I went through and did quite a bit with the crafting system. Um, I actually have to play a little bit through. I'm going to have two different videos, one where I kind of just detail like all of the uh, blueprint stuff. So this is a project done entirely in blueprints. And I remember about a year ago when people were saying like, no, this isn't really possible. You can't do this. Like, um, it, it can't work or that it would be too slow or, or, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. Right. Or that, uh, the blueprint system, the blueprint system really isn't all that great. And that, uh, you should just use C++ and, and that was like kind of a thing that I heard from quite a few people um, and I stuck to it and I uh, flopped a, f a couple projects uh, finding like bugs with the engine and stuff like that but this project has not had that problem I I've managed to just power through it so now I have uh, it's this like crazy ass like crafting system where you can select items to upgrade what their level is, upgrade their quality, and like everything has their own ingredients and like there's uh, blueprints for craft from a blueprint. You can craft new items using blueprints. Uh, currently, right now though, it's kind of brutal because you can you, you drop your blueprints when you die. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm going to be keeping it that way. Um, yeah, like, so the crafting system was pretty challenging, uh, mainly because I had all of these different modes that had to be selected first. Uh, you notice that I don't really have any, uh, I don't have any comments in any of my code, which is something that I, I want to... I want to fix. I might actually do video where videos where it's just like me going through my old fucking blueprints and commenting them, I mean, like explaining what's going on and like commenting them. But uh, like, there's a pretty good series of like different buttons that you can end up pressing, and each one of them would actually set. So I would track if the action is selected, and then I would track if the uh, if the you know which mode was selected. And then from there, I'd be able to determine when you uh, activate action, which is uh, which is this button down here. It would know which one of these to do. And the hardest part about this was just thinking about how I wanted it to work and how I could do things in a way that's interesting. Um, Ultimately, I could have probably done something that was simpler where it was just literally, you know, blueprints or lists of recipes and then it's like that. But I also want to be able to interact with the items that I already have. I want to give the player the option to um, to upgrade a piece of gear that you already have. Like, so you're, you're constantly thinking about, like, what do I want to upgrade and how I want to work with what I already have and do I want to go ahead and like craft something that's completely new 
And then there's this enhance feature. Now the enhance feature was a pretty interesting challenge because there's a lot of possibilities. So you have uh, helmet, body, gloves, legs, and boots, right? And from that, you also have um, you have different gems. You have Berserker, Marksman, Endless, Sprinters, Enduring, and Reinforce, right? So you're essentially, when you're enhancing your gear, you're essentially applying a gem, you know, uh, five different, you know, five gems to them, not five different gems, but it, it, that's what the, the, the cost is. You have to have five of those gems each to be able to perform this action. So enhance mode was interesting because I had so many different possibilities. I, in my mind, I was like, well, maybe I would just check to see like what piece of gear it was that I want to modify and then like do, you know, drag out fucking things for each and every possibility. Like it's a combination of like fucking ridiculous number of possibilities. But what I ended up actually doing was a much simpler solution is, is that I just had an active enhance list, which is just a blank array. And depending on the gem that was selected, I would then just set another array, which is just the list of, the, of, of those types of gear. And then I would check against that list of what I have of my normal gear set, whatever matched. So I could determine like if it's a pair of boots, if it's a pair of legs, and then spawn the corresponding uh, integer, you know, the corresponding uh, thing from the enhance list, and then delete the old object, and there you go. Now you have a berserker body piece. Now you've got sprinting boots and things like that. Now you've reinforced something. So that was pretty interesting to try to solve. Uh, the rest of it was, there was a little bit more weirdness going on here with repair because there's a lot of different items that you can repair. Um, the repair list for items is actually quite disgusting. It's 25 plus I decided that I would do uh, special nodes like this for um, the armor and it was uh, yeah, so worn armor, which you can repair, and then there's uh, busted armor, and then I just went through with a list of 25 in an array. I could probably have done the whole thing in an array, but I kind of wanted to, just just for clarity, from, from my own sanity, I kind of wanted to do this way, where I manually just said uh, what the new item would end up being, and that's this is what this function ends up looking like, is just basically spawning the new item recognizing what the old item is by checking to see what class it is I do this a lot actually I check to see what class and uh, things of that alright so this system is actually fully functional as far as I want it to be right now it's it's, it's got all of the different uh, aspects now there's definitely uh, more blueprints I need to make and there's just breadth of content that's lacking at this point in time, right? But otherwise, this is uh, the crafting system. Now, so now when I'm playing the game, uh, I come back to this area and I'm like, okay, you know, do I have enough credits? Can I do like, like, can I do this like extra thing? Like, can I? modify a piece of gear that I already have or or, or I found a blueprint I uh, I had a blueprint in the first level for the tri pistol which is like in an, an interesting spot um, spoiler alert not hub which is yeah level start and all the way over here so like if you're paying attention and you look this way, you might notice that there's like a ledge. You go out on the ledge, and then there's the tri pistol sitting out on this like uh, beam sticking out or something like that. All right. And then there's just a regular uh, respawning like. See, right here is just a one-time thing. It's level locked to six, 
because I don't expect that you would have to uh, materials to make a tri pistol right away. So level six is about about the time when you're kind of finished with the the content that's currently in the game. Uh, that marks that. I also did a lot of other stuff as well. So I got like a. I have this like system that determines how far into the game you are so that when you come back to your save game like your save character um it it figures out like what area to spawn you in so like if you don't complete this first fight right here if you don't complete the first fight here then you probably won't um you, you won't spawn in the hub area like you have to you have to complete this fight and get this progress tag on your character without that progress tag this door won't open and yeah and you and the uh, initial starting area like so I just call it the level control it's just a black box literally um, that has a blueprint in it that's for the level control and it determines like where you are in the game this is the first place that everybody spawns and it determines all that works fine in the editor uh, is not currently working correctly in uh, in a compiled version of the game it just spawns you at the starting area right now which is weird so um, there's a lot of other stuff that in that ended up going on too now that list is much larger. Um, there was a lot of stuff on here. Now I'm going to go over the feedback that I got from um, Alicat and talk about that and then I'll, I'll end this video. But uh, I'm going to make another video where it just shows me kind of playing and I'm going to mention, you know, like I'm currently looking for work and stuff like that. Um, I, I have to kind of step up my game as far as like <laughs> not being so focused on this at the moment and figure out like what I'm gonna be doing and you know in the next two or three months uh, if so I'm thinking about actually trying to gauge interest with this project if this project has enough interest where maybe I can like I don't know uh, pull in some kind of a meager livable income I I don't live an ex extremely expensive lifestyle unless I have to replace computer parts. Maybe I can actually finish this game, which I think in some ways that would be fucking cool because that's a blueprint first person fucking shooter, <laughs> right? I don't think that's been done yet. Uh, maybe it has, but... And, and if it has, I, I doubt it was like a Doom and Quake meets Dark Souls fucking uh, craziness kind of a game. Probably something much simpler. But I feel so comfortable right now with the, the Blueprint system that I actually feel like the Blueprint system is just amazing for like prototyping ideas. But I think it can just be used for making fucking games. Like straight up. But anyway, uh, I mean, just a little bit of organizational skill, just having a few people working under me, I'd be able to get this finished because I know I know exactly what I fucking want. I I, I know what I want these areas to look like. I have a, a a really good idea on that. That's usually the most difficult part, right? Usually, right now, like in most places that I've seen in the game industry, the artists are the only ones that ever. It, it's almost as, as though the art is what drives the design of the game because a lot of the people who are supposed to be designing things don't know what they want and completely and utterly fail to come up with any kind of decisions as far as actual fucking gameplay design. Anyway, that's not anybody in, in specific. This is just a general thing that I've noticed about most places in the game industry. Finding people who can actually lead is fucking hard, apparently, because it just doesn't, it just, throughout my career, it hasn't really been something that I see too often, and it's something that 
I want to step up my game on. Anyway, uh, I went through ability to travel to any unlock home point, uh, a fabricator machine, and dismantle auto. Um, so what this one means is like when you're at the fabricator, you're uh, you're dismantled items rather than going on the dropping to the floor and you having to like pick them up. They automatically, if you're at a dis at a fabricator, dismantling stuff just goes right into your bag, and that makes it a little bit easier. So you don't have to like worry about it. It's just a quality of life thing. Um, I nerfed the pain chance. Um, nerf plasma rifle. Nerf falling damage. Uh, falling damage actually needs to be like severely unnerfed at the moment. Um, so there's a bug right now I need to fix where AOE damage is like insane. So any any weapons, rocket launchers, grenade launchers, they hit everything because there there's a radius around every character in the game that uh that makes the AOE touch them and they take full damage. So I'm I'm going to have to figure something out where it's like I do the AOE damage based on distance from the center, maybe draw a line trace out, you can't like, I don't know. So that's uh, the plasma rifle and the nerf bla and the uh, blast nerf blaster are not actually properly nerfed at the moment. They're really good guns, if you get one just use it, it's fucking amazing. The only thing is, is that all the good stuff uses all the best ammo. Uh, what else am I dealing with here? So... Yeah, uh, I added a message at the very end. You've reached the end of the game's content. Hope you enjoyed everything up to this point. <laughs> I'll get a kick out of it if anyone actually sees that message. Um, I'm going to be releasing the playable version again. Another Steam It post. Doing all that stuff. Um, now let's see if I can go over Alicat's uh, feedback because it was some pretty interesting... There was some pretty interesting stuff. So let's see. Uh, your interpretation of my comments from the video, 100% accurate. Crafting needs to have a zone or a workbench area. Check. Weapon management needs a, a, a click wheel system. Hold E to select weapon tool. Let go to use. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's that's just that's sort of a console thing, isn't it? Though. I'm just saying, PC Master Race and all. Uh, yeah, that's well. I mean, it's definitely not a bad thing to add to the game. It just seems, seems a little. I, I Fallout 4 has it. As a matter of fact, I think Fallout 4 does have it. But it's also a console game. <laughs> hmm. Um, gravity repulsion, force gra. You know, this is the gravity thing. I uh, I increased the gravity on the player. Uh, falling damage ended up <laughs> being a little bit interesting with that, so I had to adjust that. Now, now falling damage is meaningless, <laughs> which is probably not the worst thing. <laughs> uh, level structure is in the too much too soon school, aka blowing your wad. Yeah, I could definitely see that. If if it takes 14 seconds to get to the end of the second room, then I'm immediately facing umpteen obstacles and opposition and forces of antagonism within the first 20 seconds. I need more corridor to run around in. Lots of empty spaces with nothing in it. Now, this is an interesting one to act, uh, actually being asked for. That's not typically when I see a player ask for something along those lines. That's not really what's being asked for. Empty spaces are not necessarily always a good idea. It just means that there's not combat. So sometimes wires can get uh, crossed. When somebody asks, like, I want lots of empty areas, not really. It's, it's more like areas where there's just less combat. Right now, uh, the dark base just, like, opens you right up into fucking hell. And so does, uh, in a lot of ways, so does the uh, opening level as well. Like, I spare no nothing at the moment, and I definitely think that the pacing could definitely... Uh, air more on the side of atmosphere, especially since 
I'm a, you know, in this case, like, I'm an indie dev, like, I gotta stop putting, like, 15 things every square inch. There's, there's gotta be, there actually probably does need to be some empty spaces, but, um, yeah. I don't know. It's tough, because I want the game to flow exactly like my Doom levels flow. So, if you play... If you play my uh, Redemption of the Slain, if you play No Rest for the Living, you'll see that's the kind of pacing that that's exactly what I'm trying to replicate. Which means that there's it's pretty combat heavy. But in my case, in this case, like the game probably ears more on the side of something like uh, oh, it's some kind of, it's some kind of a weird combination. It ends up feeling a little bit more like like a combat heavy system shock or something. But yeah, they're, they're definitely. I, I'm definitely thinking about that. Like, once I once I can get myself away from the uh, nitty gritty uh, fixing, like the teleportation system, the crafting system's done. I'm actually in a position right now where I can actually begin the level design stuff again. Uh, and yeah, yeah, I, I'm gonna add more areas where there's stuff to do, but there's not really combat. I, I need to I need to like spread it out a little bit and then have like areas where it's just fucking intense because ultimately the game is going to be really intense like the stuff that I have right now is still the early stuff like I want to have levels where you're just like going in and it's just fucking like enemies are just pouring into the areas that you are you're you're trying to fight through so the stuff right now is not really representative of how the combat is going to get later on not suggesting it should be like that but you accurately called it pacing and it is apt yes pacing is definitely a huge thing you got to make these levels way way bigger in terms of how long it takes me to even need a level uh, you know a weapon and take part in any combat now, in the case of pacing out the weapons, there's kind of a conflict because the one of the things is I'm trying to do right now is kind of give you the guns, you know, a variety of weapons fairly early on because you're constantly going to need new ones and you're con constantly going to be switching them out for other ones. So the, the the pace of this game isn't going to be like when I finally get that rocket launcher, I'm I'm you know, I'm done as far as looking for rocket launchers from now, you know, now until I fight the cyber demon. No, it, it's now it's going to be like, oh, I found a slightly better rocket launcher. Or, whoa, I got enough credits and now I can upgrade the rocket launcher I currently have. Now I got a minigun. I can't equip the rocket launcher and the minigun because they're both heavy weapons. Like, it just goes like that. And it's going to just be a constant, like... Going back, upgrading your shit, coming back out, finding better stuff, getting more stuff, doing runs in an area that you already know, like, and just constantly, like, improving and getting better. It's just like a cycle, and hopefully addicting. A hopefully, a hopefully an addicting cycle. First level should be a dojo, hand in hand. Uh, it kind of does that right now. Um, but it doesn't really do it for any particular amount of time. I just do it long enough for you to kill... About three zombies before I give you a pistol. I could I could probably spread things out a little bit more though. The new weapon is the reward one finds at the end of the level to fight the slightly tougher baddies. In a way, I kind of do that with the shotgun. When you when you get a shotgun as soon as you complete the first battle, the first big like scripted battle. The hypothetical level design in this regard is much. In the Half-Life linear point-to-point -point structure, uh, technically yes. Um, I have I'm doing a combination where Half-Life doesn't do this, but I'm doing a I'm doing a combination where it's a linear flow like Half-Life, but you can circle back around on yourself and end up in an area that you've already been before. And also, I'm doing alternate paths, which is something that Dark Souls does. And doesn't isn't typically a, the best idea in first-person shooters because people get lost a lot quicker. <laughs> but um, I'm so I'm being very careful about that. But in, in the dark base, you can see alternate path 
uh, is like available like in almost right away you can go a different route and approach a lot of the same problems from a different angle not always a good idea to try to do that kind of stuff because it takes a lot more design time to do but um, it's something that I'm, I'm going to shoot for and following areas and stuff like that um, the logistics character loadouts this is a thing that intrigues me and makes me froth at the mouth turning this into a real adventure game mine when playing but only slightly like at the end of the demo showing the player an enormous structure going on the horizon and upwards oh yeah oh yeah you're gonna see stuff I want I want to have like other areas that you will eventually go to visible in the skybox and shit monster types should follow weapon types I alluded to this but didn't mention it you train the player on using weapons so the player knows what weapons kill which monsters and how many rounds are required per monster level one zombies four clean shots yeah <laughs> risk reward moment to breathe sigh of relief mop the forehead <laughs> deep into the structure game and one thing that was re that's been really inspiring for me right now as far as the structure of the map is uh, yeah there's this anime called blame if you haven't seen it it's really good but their premise is the most perfect thing for a vi for a game like this ever like they couldn't have possibly have thought of a better premise for a game like this it's literally uh, people have lost control of artificial intelligence and the art artificial intelligence is continuing to expand a city almost to like infinity and it's just these just sprawling structures because the AI that can you know the, the I guess the I guess they're called the world builders or, or the this, they're just they're just continuing to build because nothing is telling them to stop because no no humans have uh, told them that they need to stop because all humans died from like a disease or who knows what so like man <laughs> you just see shit like if you look at the art Oh, it's just like there's just so many like crazy places in that. All right, anyway, I went on a fucking rant. I gotta, I gotta end this because it's already fucking like 30 minutes. So I said, mean the level streaming. Uh, I'm not going to be making use of level streaming because I'm going to be doing hard loads. Um, and it's just for simplicity's sake. Level streaming is really good for bigger stuff when you have like really you know large amounts of memory being used up consoles with limited amounts of memory so you want to stream stuff in uh, then there's like garbage collection and like making sure that all the fucking things are like when you stream a new level that eh, it's it would be much it's much simpler for me to build separate areas in separate level files and just let you kind of warp around it's just easier it's easier for me and it's I think it's mentally easier for the player because you you have these breaks which are level loads uh, between areas otherwise I'm literally thank you for tolerating my voice dude <laughs> you didn't do anything wrong I didn't even know why I'm to how is it tolerating Actually, Unreal Engine the streaming system within it Allowing someone also to see the editor when you're in it, a type of desktop capture input. Uh, I keep thinking of doing that, but uh, the only thing that's stopping me from doing it is that, like, sometimes when I'm doing these really long um, stretches of just working on something that's kind of difficult to figure out, I often spend time just thinking about a solution, and I can't, I can't imagine that being entertaining, but like. Like the uh, the thing uh, with the crafting system, like how would I how would I solve all of the different possible combinations for enhancing, right? At first, it wasn't immediately obvious to me that I can just assign an array 
to another array and then get the index off of this and comparing it to uh, the normal gear list, right? But the normal, but I'm kind of lucking out in some ways. Like even this is not the most elegant solution because what if I want to start adding more things to this list that aren't just regular normal armor? So that's a uh, yeah, that, that's a that's a thing. I, I don't know though. It would actually probably be a good idea for me to just like chill and it, it maybe it would it force me to be more focused. I'd just be like streamy. Um, I don't know. Oh, right, well, well, that said, uh, with all that said, I got, I got a new version of the level up, or of the game up, I said a level, I got a new version of the game up where there's one bug that I already figured out exists, and that is, for some reason, only when you're playing in the editor, using home points, will allow you to um, teleport around. So like, yeah. See, it says cargo hold. Wait. So you have like the, the different areas, right? Sanctuary is a forgotten bulwark area a level, right? So if I run back in the sanctuary, I open I go here. This is supposed to be the first one that you, you know, you hit, and you can select this, or you can select this. All right, so you can go to the dark base, which is another map, right? Cargo hold, and boom, I'm back here again, right? And then I could do this. So I mean, it's straight up bonfires from Dark Souls. Uh, for some reason, the version that I'm uploading right now. Um, or at least the, the, the version of the playable version that I'm uploading these never unlock and I might actually have to talk to epic about this because I think this is I think this is a bug I think this is actually a bug with the tech because why would it work in the editor but not in the not in a proper copy of the game like what the fuck is that um, so I might have uh, I might have hit on something that's kind of weird um, another thing that I noticed is that the uh, travel tags and progress tags that are applied to objects in the world for some reason they don't always stay I've had to go back and like if I modify the level if I save something like this shit would just be blank and that's annoying so stuff kind of just randomly breaks alright I'm gonna make a, uh, a video of me just playing through uh, the game as per normal <laughs> and I'm gonna end this one now and done